Have you ever done the slicer settings just to realize that adding the much needed supports is going to double the print time and waste almost or even more filament than the actual model? My name is Mike. I'm an engineer and today I'm going to teach you how to minimize the need of supports in your prints. So first off, what is supports? When you are printing a model, there might be areas where the printer head tries to extrude plastics mid-air. This is sometimes an issue and the solution is to let the printer build up a structure to support the plastic in these areas. These structures are called supports and will be thrown away after the print is done. For smaller gaps, so-called bridging, it's usually fine to not have any supports. The bridged parts may be sagging slightly, depending on temperature, 3D printer, model, fan speed, you know, material, etc. But if it's not dimensionally or visually important, it should be fine. However, if it's a steep overhang or a very long bridge, you will probably need something or the print will be ruined. So if we take a look at this board game model that I found on Thingiverse, here we can see the print time and amount of plastic without supports, which, just to be clear, will not work in this case. It's always a good idea to look through the layers of your print before printing so you can spot possible issues. Here we find a lot of plastic starting from thin air, so supports are very much needed. Turning on supports using the standard parameters of Cura, time is pretty much doubled and the amount of filament is more than doubled. Models like this often have a lot of need for support that are also difficult to remove and causes bad surface finish. So how do we fix this? Well, there are a few ways, thankfully. First off, you need to learn the limits of your printer. So print this overhang test and have a look at where the quality is actually starting to deteriorate to a point where you don't find it acceptable anymore. Also, print at the layer height that you will be printing on most of the time, since this is uh, because if you have thinner layers, each layer will kind of peak out less from the one below, thus not having the same need for supports. For my test, I'll choose the average of what I usually print at, which is 0.2 of a millimeter. One important thing to think about is that if you have a printer that only cools the plastic from one side, like the stock Ender 3 that I use, it will be noticeably better in one direction. So if you're printing a lot of complex models with a lot of steep overhang and bridging, I'd advise you to take a look at the cooling duct and possibly change it to one that cools the prints from all sides. Personally, I design most of the things I print myself and I design it securely within the limits of my printer. Anyhow, here is my results and we can clearly see that for at least 60 degrees it looks good in all directions. So that is where I will tell the slicer to start making supports. Secondly, try tilting the print. This is a model where it's common to use a lot of supports but it will print fine with a lot less. The first thought would reasonably be to print it this way, but if we tilt the enterprise towards the back, we can save hours of print time on a lot of filament. Just make sure that you have a decent amount of footprint at the build plate. Using a brim is often a good idea in these cases. Third idea. When looking at models to print, you should try to imagine where it's going to need support and if it's going to benefit if you tilt it in different ways. Here is another female barbarian model that's going to need a lot less supports, which will allow for a better surface finish, faster printing and less wasted materials. Going back to the first model though, after implementing the changes I've mentioned, we've reduced the print time by almost 40 minutes, reduced the amount of wasted materials a lot, uh, and we've also improved the surface finish of the front of the model, which I think is the most important. To conclude my advice, 
on minimizing supports. Number one, find out the limits of your printer and set the slicer settings accordingly. Try tilting the model to find the most efficient way of printing it. Try to find models that are designed in a way that will need less supports from the start. And a bonus is to reduce the layer height. This will probably increase the sprint time, but it may be worth it for the surface finish that will be a, also an effect of this. Speaking of design, I will upload another video in a few weeks that is going to cover some simple design guidelines in order to help you design your own things with minimal to no support at all. So if you'd like to see that, remember to subscribe to this channel. Happy printing and I'll see you next time.